everybody, this is Alchemist 2, and I'm back again with another book review. I just read the first book in the Dark Tower series. There are seven books in the series, if you're not familiar with them. I had known of Dark Tower before, and I do believe I had read them at one point because I'm a huge Stephen King fan. <clears throat> but, of course, this is one that's highly underrated due to the fact that Stephen King is known mainly for his horror. <laughs> he was a pioneer, especially with The Stand, which is considered his most notorious and best work by many King fans. And I do agree The Stand is exemplary. However, I must say that The Dark Tower is equally stupendous and stellar. And the reason I say that is because it is a fantasy that is, as the title suggests, very dark and eerie and... <clears throat> It's, it's raw and gritty, and I just, I like the whole eeriness and uncomfortable setting that we have, but yet it keeps your interest. It's something that I think we're all interested in, and the closest that we've come to that on a small screen would be Constantine, which I absolutely loved, and unfortunately they canceled it. C, not the CN, but CW said, oh, we're going to pick it up. They had Flash and Supergirl and um arrow of course i like supernatural <clears throat> i don't really do superhero shows except for powerless which is <laughs> unbelievably good however um they mentioned oh yeah we'll we'll do that at some point in time but i don't think they ever did i wish they would green light it but maybe it's just wishful thinking on my part we'll see if they <laughs> if they heed the fans call because um, they're going to have to start catering to fans due to the fact that Hollywood seems to be running low on gas, it seems. They're doing a lot of sequels, and I, I do enjoy sequels, don't get me wrong, but I'm just thinking, really, you have to do a, a, a threequel? We all know that threequels typically don't do so well as the initial first film in the trilogy. And we've seen this time and time again, and... It's almost like, hey, we're just doing this because it's a cash cow. We're going to milk it until it's dry. And they did that with POTC, which I love POTC. Don't get me wrong, but uh, I haven't seen the last one due to the fact that I just I want to save money. I want to see uh, bigger box office films that are more interesting, like uh, what seems more interesting to me, like Valerian and Atomic Blonde. Both look absolutely kick-ass. Um, this do, this does as well. This has that kind of atmosphere that I absolutely, I can't resist it. It's, it's something that I'm drawn to. And just like Constantine, it's that whole hellscape that, um, fascinates me. And this is done more seriously. We've seen it done seriously in Constantine. We saw it parodied in Little Nicky. <laughs> the less mention of that movie, the better, even though that one is a guilty pleasure for me. Uh, but this is a um, highly anticipated movie. I've seen the trailers, Idris Elba, Matthew McConaughey. It's going to be epic as far as I'm concerned. I am um, extremely... <clears throat> I am extremely uh, eager to see it when it comes out on the 4th of August, which I will do. Uh... There are seven books in the series, and I've only read the first, and I'm hoping that they make all the seven into films. Uh, I, I don't know what direction they're going to take, but from what I can see in the trailer, it looks absolutely phenomenal, and it's nothing short of magnificent. So I am super, super psyched to see what will happen. Of course, I love Idris Elba. I love Matthew McConaughey. So, yeah, it's already big in my book. I would love to see other actors that are uh more well known <laughs> in the in the cast but i like to have unknowns as well that they can get their feet wet in something like this this is this is a major event to me and um even though it's underrated especially by a lot of king fans i still consider it um a very ambitious work by mr king because uh fantasy sells very well but it was something that even Mr. King writes <laughs> superbly he he just has this gift as a writer he he's very blunt he's very um 
he's very direct in, in how his characters interact with one another. He's he's not against using profanity. And uh, it just it shows uh, the types of um, attributes that these characters possess, which I, I like as, as well, just um, as a character study, because I'm learning how to write better myself. Um, I can't really say that much else about this book, other than I absolutely love it. It was unbelievably short. And of course, this is just about uh, the gunslinger, and we learn about um, <clears throat> Roland de Chain and his father, and the mysterious man in black. I don't think the man in black has a name. If he does, we're probably introduced later on in the series. I don't. It's like I said, it's been a while since I've I've read the entire series, so my memory is a little bit murky. But having read the first book, I'm like, oh yeah, I remember Roland and how. Um, just enigmatic he is and the boy and the the vision of world I always love that kind of Alice in Wonderland Wizard of Oz kind of fish out of water I've always adored that because it's something that I think all of us can relate to especially if we're going through a transitional period in our life and this speaks highly to me um of course I always love fantasy fantasy is great escapism I'm very interested in seeing how this turns out because it's it's good versus evil and it's supernatural. So yeah, I'm definitely drawn to it. Uh, that's all I got to say about the Dark Tower. So till next time, live long and prosper. Ciao, Tootsie.